Hello, welcome to episode 230 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 3rd of November. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I haven't got an awful lot of knitting to show you because I've been working on some um, patterns that are coming out. I'm going to give you a sneak preview next week so t stay tuned for that. But I thought I'd go through some pattern ideas to use your advent minis in. So I've got some samples that I've made in the past and some ideas for things that I'd like to try in the future. Um, so I thought I'd go through those. Um, and also I've got a question from the Ask Me Anything thread on the Ravelry group. It is about my hair, so watch out for that. <laughs> I have some information on my shop update. This week I've got a few things going on that could be good gift ideas for Christmas. So little bits and pieces this week. Next week I've got a bigger shop update, so watch out for that as well. I have a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast, modelling some of the items that, that I've made with Advent Mini. So, first of all, I've got some winners to announce for the 20,000 subscriber giveaway so thank you so much for subscribing to the website as well as my newsletter I'll pop the names on the screen of the winners and I will be emailing those as well um, to, to let you know that you've won if you just confirm your postal address for me by replying to that email um, I'll get your prizes sent out to you as soon as possible I did notice that the person that I tried to email to let them know that you've won the October yarn clubs haven't replied to me yet so if the person hasn't replied to me by next week I'll redraw for the October Yarn Club prize. Um, so if your name is Peggy and you're from Pennsylvania make sure you check your emails and even your junk box as well to make sure that you haven't missed that email. So let's get on with the section where I'm talking about all these sort of advent projects. Now I've got a few projects that I've made quite a few years ago now. This first one is called the Adventina Shawl and it's a pattern by Katrin Schubert and it is a zigzag wrap pattern now i made a ridiculously long version of this <laughs> i actually picked a load of minis out of my stash as well as using advent minis here so it's a massive mixture of different colors but i've tried to fade them um and this is just the most big huge shawl if i put it on it's not really a shawl it's a wrap if i put it on it literally can be wrapped around a few times and still hang really low so it is the hugest wrap but also very very cozy so um i didn't actually follow the pa this pattern completely because there is a lace section in it which i omitted and i just did the plain sort of garter stitch part because i wanted to just have a easy knit over sort of the advent period and it it served its purpose and it is absolutely massive <laughs> So that one is the first of my um, minis, mini guzzling projects, but I really liked the way that I'd sort of positioned the yarns. I tried to sort of make them fade as much as possible, but obviously these weren't sort of designed um, to fade like this. It's just ones out of my stash um, mixed with some other advent minis I'd had on the year um, that I started to knit this. So the ends of the wrap are pointed, that's the finishing end and the starting end is also pointed as well, it looks like that. So that's the first one. I will talk about wraps first, I sort of group them together a little bit. So this next pattern, I actually wrote this pattern and this is called the Cupid's Arrow Wrap and I incorporated some sections of lace into this one quite simple lace though so nothing really really challenging but there's some little sections of lace here here and here um, one end has got this shape and the other end is that shape and that's the Cupid's Arrow Wrap and I've included tassels on mine but of course you don't have to use the tassels but the rest of it actually is quite an easy garter stitch sort of pattern you've got like an asymmetric panel with one side being narrower than the other so you've got a sort of arrow shape um, and I have actually got this in a couple of colours as well so that's my blue one but I also have it in a purple and pink um, version. You can tell how I store my wraps here. I've rolled them up so to keep them as neat as possible. So that is the end 
um, the one end of the wrap which is the sort of feather end of the arrow, the Cupid's arrow wrap. And then we have the sort of pointy end, all with tassels. And again, we've got garter sections interspersed with a few lace panels there. And this is just using up some of my stash colours, really. I just picked all the pinks and purples that I thought would go together really nicely. So that um, was actually part of the uh, yarn advent calendar in 2019, I have to think then which year it was. <laughs> so that one was part of the um, advent calendar in 2019 of my advent calendar, um, but it is now available to purchase if you want it. My next pattern that I actually knitted is, was actually a, supposed to be a blanket pattern but I knitted it into a sort of scarf shape pattern instead and it is the, the North Easterly blanket made into a scarf or wrap um, and I just did four rows with all the different colour minis um, incorporated into it. This is quite a sort of tight gauge compared to the other wraps, so it feels a lot sort of denser. Um, but I do think that that works really nicely as a wrap as well as a blanket. So that's the North Easterly by Skinanigans. And you can just use any sort of length of yarn in this one. I just basically knitted until um, I'd more or less run out of yarn. So that is my third option. Now I'm going into the blanket sort of area. This next one I have two of. So this is the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart from Curious Handmade. And both of these blankets I use a lot for Jensen actually. They're really, really useful. So it's quite a lightweight blanket, but I have two of them. So I quite often double them up in the pushchair or uh, um, I can just layer them up as and when I need them. If it's a bit colder, I use two. I've got more than two blankets so I can quite often put two or three on if I think it's a really cold day. So this one I've striped with sort of quite bold colours um, and then I have another version which is in sort of purples and pinks which looks like this. So this is the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart from Curious Handmade and it is a sort of square shape. I think you can get away with using 24 10 gram minis or 12 20 gram minis um, for this one um, but that's a really nice project as well you could use this nicely as a sort of um, a lap blanket to keep you nice and cozy um, and it's just a nice it's a really nice knit um, and it seems to knit up quite quickly this one these have been used rather a lot so you can see some pilling on these a little bit <laughs> so that is another great option I also have another one of my patterns, which was last year's advent calendar sort of um, pattern that went along with the advent, and it's called the Triangulum Blanket. And they're made of little triangles that are joined together as you go. So you pick up stitches along um, other triangles as you're knitting, so you don't have to join them together. This one's knitted with sort of pinks and purples and greys. Um, I put the colour scheme together by picking out um, the colours that I really liked, but you could do these in, in random. So again, I use this a lot for Jensen in the push chair. This is just a small version um, that I've got, which is a sort of cot size, um, but I use it in the push chair a lot. Since I actually uh, finished this one, there I have included um, some additional instructions in the pattern for half triangles so that you can square off these side edges so the top of the blanket um, is straight on this one but of course you could straighten off those edges if, if you wanted it to be because it's sort of zigzag and there is another version of the the pattern where you can do like a hexagon shape as well and I did notice that somebody um, put on Instagram that they'd done a hexagon version with tassels at each of the corners and um, so that was really lovely so the triangle and blanket uses about three grams of yarn and I've written the pattern for both fingering weight and DK yarn so if you've got fingering weight or DK yarn minis that can be useful 
I have a crochet pattern next. Now this I've made into a cushion but the original pattern is actually a blanket and this is the Battenberg and I know for each of my little squares I only used about two grams of yarn so you could get quite a few of those out of each of your advent minis and I've incorporated mine with some undyed yarn um, to sort of bring the colours together. I do have um, another one on the go actually which I've started to crochet uh, as a blanket for Jensen but uh, it's been put on hold because I've started several other projects but this particular one I made into a cushion cover so that's another possibility that is the Battenberg blanket by Sandra Paul so I look I quite regularly look on Ravelry for projects and I noticed that the Potter and Bloom 24 days sock is another great use for those minis as well there's really thin little stripes for those 24 different colours and you can incorporate that with a, a colour to bring it all together so you could use cream, grey, black or well any colour really um, so I thought that was a good option I'll pop a picture up here so you can see and I did notice that Potter and Bloom also do a cowl which has got a similar sort of pattern as well so that's another option and I've had the Land of Sweets cowl by Helen Stewart on my to-do list for a while as well so that's another um, that's another really good project to do. I know the Land of Sweets cowl is, can be really long, lots of different patterns to have a go at if you wanted a bit of interest there. So that's all the projects that I've either knitted or crocheted or are hoping to. But I have got a new pattern coming out um, on the 1st of December, which will also be emailed to the people who have purchased the advent calendars uh, for this year. And the cowl pattern for this year I'm going to hopefully show on next week's podcast um, and that is going to be in DK and fingering weight yarn um, so you can use either of those weight yarns for the pattern and it's going to be available in two sizes so it can be a single or a double wrap cowl and it's going to be called the sound wave cowl so I thought jolly jingles music sound wave <laughs> <laughs> that's what the advent was called and I wanted to incorporate that sort of theme in the name of the cowl so the sound wave cowl will be available on the 1st of December um, and I hopefully will give you some sneak peeks next week I also have the jolly jingles sock pattern um, and I might give you a sneak peek of that next week as well um, so at the moment it's going to my regular test knitters but I may need a few more test knitters so you're, if you are interested in test knitting if you keep an eye on my Instagram account and I'll make an announcement if I do need any ad additional test knit for any of those two new patterns so now it's the ask me anything section so I had a question off Susan and it's unusual because it's about my hair <laughs> So she was saying that she's recently had a spiral perm and she's having real difficulty controlling frizz. I am probably the best person to ask because I have the frizziest hair on the planet. <laughs> so, and what products, she, she was asking me what products do I use to calm it down. So I generally use a shampoo and a conditioner um, when I'm washing my hair and I normally use a Tresemme one for dry and damaged hair just to... Um, condition it as much as possible and then I use another leave-in conditioner and I've got one here that's actually nearly empty but it's the bedhead ego boost and I put some of that on after I've washed it and I leave this in so this is leave-in conditioner extra extra moisturizing so I pop that on and then after that to sort of keep the sort of curls in place I use foxy curls by bedhead at the moment I have used other products by um, by frizzies which are pretty good I use those as well it's just so happens that I'm using this at the moment and I do like the smell of this one these two products you can at least sometimes get them at shops like B&M um, for sort of reduced prices um, but otherwise you can get them from like Superdrug or Boots or places like that anyway they're not hard to get hold of I just make sure that I've got as much conditioner on my hair as possible <laughs> But I hope that helps Susan. Frizz is such a pain. So hopefully that, that'll that that'll help tame the curls a little bit. So next is my shop update. So I have a few little bits and pieces going in the shop this week. That's Friday the 4th of November at 7pm GMT. And I've pinned these little progress heapers to the back of a cushion so that you can see them a bit better. I'll use this as a little pin cushion. Um, but I've got these gorgeous flowers that are embedded in resin. And I thought they were so, so sweet, especially this little heart one here. 
so they're not too heavy and you can choose between the large lobster or the lever back clasp for a progress keeper and I just thought these were really nice um, to pop on your project to mark where the beginning of the round is if you're knitting or you can do the same for crochet and you can also actually use these to hold on to your stitch when you're not um, hooking away with your crochet um, just to make sure that it doesn't get undone uh, in your bag as you're lifting it out so those are ideal for marking your progress or keeping that crochet stitch um, from unraveling I love those ones they're really really pretty so those will be in the shop I've got one more pin going in the shop and it is a sheep um, and I have topped up the stock of some of the other pins that I got in the shop earlier so that that will be in the shop on Friday as well I'm also going to be stocking these really cute little tins there's a number of different colors and patterns on the top um, but they'll actually come with 15 little bulb pins and also a darning needle you can keep that in your knitting or crochet bag and just have a little place to keep your needles um, and and stitch marker so I've noticed that these little snips from higher higher um, fit in the tin really nicely like that um, so they will be listed separately the snips um, but I will leave a link in the listing for the tin for the snips that you know they fit in I've tried the three different versions of the snips that I've got um, to make sure that they fit in the little tin and they're brilliant so those will just be available um, as a separate item because there's so many choices of colors and I like you to have a choice of color rather than just having a random color so that's the kitty version but I've got a dog and also an octopus version as well in different colors so those will be on the listing with the stitch markers and the needle in there and you can order the snips if you want them to go inside so that'll be a nice little set as a gift for Christmas as well or just a gift for yourself so I've been looking at these little leather tags for ages and I found two that I really really like so they all come in different colors but these are the actual designs um, so it comes with a little tag that says handmade with love um, this one can be stitched on just on the four corners there and this one is brilliant because you can put it on the edge of a project like a hat um, or a scarf or something just to really finish it off and I think that'll be really nice for gift knitting as well so they'll come in packs um, with all these colors so you can choose um, so there'll be a pack of those longer ones and then also um, a pack of these little short ones as well so lots of different colors you've got your natural colors um but also like the pink purple and blues and teals as well so you've got a whole range of lovely little colors um and they'll come in packs like this so that you can actually compare them with the project that you're putting them on um and have a lot of choice in terms of color so those will be going in the shop this Friday, the 4th of November at 7pm GMT. I've also managed to get a whole batch of new Opal DK yarns that I showed you on the podcast last week. Um, in the listing it shows a little picture of what they look like knitted up, so make sure you have a little look at that. But they're really lovely, these Opal yarns, because they make a pattern without you having to make any effort, really, and great fun for knitting socks. They're 150 grams, so ideal for knitting uh, a reasonable size pair of socks. 150 grams should be plenty um, for an adult, unless you've got absolutely massive feet. Think you'll be absolutely fine so normally i can get away with about 110 120 grams for a normal uk size six for me so 150 should be plenty for a longer um, longer foot of course it also depends on how long you do your leg as well but 150 grams should be enough unless you've got really really big feet um, and i've got all these these colors in stock we did run out of stock um, of a couple of the colors last week um, so I've restocked all of those this one was particularly popular um, gorgeous sort of corals and blues and um, beiges in there as well as this one here so this one's called sugary sweet sugary sweet frostberries I think and this one was called shimmering shimmering icicles I think anyway they'll all be in the shop 
Um, I've already updated these ones actually, so you don't need to wait for the shop update if you want to get hold of um, a skein of those. So next week, I'm excited because I've got some new fabric and new bags to go in the shop, and I'm hoping to get some new kits in the shop as well. So hopefully they'll be in the shop next week um, to make some Christmas stockings. So there'll be three different styles of fabric for that. Um, so watch out next week's podcast um, for an update on those. So last but not least, it's Jensen. So over to you, Jensen. So today, Jensen is going to show us how he gets all snuggled up in his pushchair. But he's ah! trying. <laughs> he's trying ah. to um, escape, I think. So Adam's going to put go. the it's first the blankets. <laughs> so we Good normally boy. put one of the blankets over him inside his little snug because it's been really quite cold. Um, lately and then we can always push that down inside where his feet are in case he gets a little bit warm um, so Adam's going to demonstrate that and then instead of wearing um, jumpers sometimes what we tend to do is put another blanket on him so he doesn't want to go in the bush chair now um, we put this tuck it around his neck all nice and warm Sometimes double it over depending on how cold it is and then he doesn't have to struggle putting on his little gloves Oh, you look a little bit tired Jensen. He's due for his nap look, but you're all snuggly now ready for a little walk to get you to sleep Night night Jensen. So thank you so much for watching Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in next week's podcast Bye